They once said if a journalist leaves his home in the morning and can safely return home in the evening there is press freedom. I left my house in the morning and could not return home, Hidayat Karaka, a Turkish journalist, wrote in a recent message conveyed from behind bars. Semenyalu Broadcasting Group Chairman Karaka, who has been in prison for more than four months since a media crackdown on December 14 due to a fictional TV series that aired on one of his broadcasting group's TV channels, was referring to a statement made by Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu. He once told a journalist asking about freedom of the press in Turkey that his country has press freedom if you can safely go home from this press conference. Karaka's lawyer Fikret Duran says, Hidayat Karaka has been jailed in Salivari prison for months without any concrete evidence. He is accused of establishing and leading a terrorist organization, a charge that even prosecutors have failed to substantiate so far. His arrest was based on an audio conversation Karaka had held with Islamic scholar Fethullah Gulen that emerged from an illegal wiretap. First of all, illegal wiretaps cannot be accepted as evidence. Moreover, when the content of the conversation is examined, it is seen that it featured nothing illegal, Duran told Sunday's Zayman. Karaka has not yet been indicted and, considering the unlawful practices he has faced so far, his lawyers fear the sharp practices will continue once the indictment is prepared. Yet, we will continue our legal battle, he says. In a February letter to L. E. Mond, a French daily with a circulation of 312,000, which receives 64 million monthly visitors to its website, Karaka said he is not the first journalist to be arrested in Turkey, but given the authoritarian practices of the Turkish government, he will not be the last journalist to be arrested either. He was correct. Another outspoken journalist, Mehmet Berensu, was arrested on March 1 in what is seen as another politically motivated investigation. After he was arrested, we hoped that he was going to be released that day or the next as he was arrested in relation with a case of which he was acquitted. Now that it has been more than a month since Mehmet was arrested, we have understood that we have to acknowledge his arrest as a pre-planned process, Nisibi Berensu, Mehmet Berensu's wife, told Sunday's Zayman. Mrs. Berensu says she is not holding out hope that a court decision could be obtained for her husband's release pending trial before the June 7 elections, noting that the prosecutor is purposefully slowing down the case and delaying the indictment. The tariff journalist, who is being charged with acquiring confidential documents, was placed under arrest five times because of documents he used in his reports. He received journalism awards for making an extensive contribution to the end of the military guardianship after he exposed the most recent coup plans drafted to destroy Turkish democracy. But now, five years after exposing the coup plans, he is behind bars. We have no doubt that this is a plot against Baron Su, says his lawyer Serkin Sokol. A prosecutor can launch an investigation against anyone, although it may be groundless, Sokol told Sunday's Zayman. However, keeping a journalist who did not flee the country after he was briefly detained five times earlier, although he could have, and who cannot obscure the evidence as he submitted the coup documents to prosecutors five years ago, shows that the arrest decision, which is a security measure to prevent the suspect from leaving the country and obscuring evidence, has turned into a way of punishment. The courts that issued the warrant for the two journalists' arrests and which have rejected continuous appeals on these decisions are penal courts of peace, which belong to a familiar government-backed project. These courts were once heralded by President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who said, we are developing a project that will allow us to file thousands of cases and lawsuits. They have put us in a castle called the Penal Court of Peace, and we are hitting one wall and then another, says Sokol. Karaka's case is an example of how the penal courts of peace take politically motivated rulings. Karaka's lawyer says more than 30 appeals that they filed against the arrest of the Semenyalu executive were rejected by the court without any tangible reasoning. They just used cliches like the appeal was rejected as there is no violation of the law in the arrest, Duran says. There are not many things we can do under these circumstances. We are doing whatever we can within the boundaries of the laws. We will soon file an individual application at the Constitutional Court but we do not have much hope, Baron's lawyer adds.
international reaction grows. Although the imprisoned journalists, with the increasing government pressure on the judiciary, see little hope of regaining their freedom for now, international reactions against their arrests continue to grow. Press advocacy groups have frequently highlighted deteriorating press freedoms in the country, noting that the crackdown on the media has only intensified since a corruption scandal broke in December 2013. The U.S. has repeatedly pointed to press freedom woes in Turkey, and major press advocacy bodies have slammed Turkey for its brutal treatment of journalists. Some 74 lawmakers from the U.S. Senate have sent a letter to U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry to express concern over what they called an affront to the basic principles of democracy in Turkey, urging the Secretary to speak up against violations of press freedom in Turkey. We write to express our deep concern about the persistence of human rights violations in Turkey, 74 U.S. Senators from both sides of the aisle wrote in the letter, the largest number of U.S. Senators to have ever signed a letter concerning Turkey. Reporters Without Borders, RSF, ranked Turkey 149th out of 180 countries in its latest Press Freedom Index while Freedom House described Turkey as not free in relation to upholding press freedoms. Most recently, three New York politicians wanted to visit Karaka in Salivri prison but were prevented by the prison's management. New York State Assembly members Joseph Saladino and Joseph Borelli along with New York City Council member Vincent M. Ignacio visited Stanbul in April to meet with Karaka in the prison. However, the management of Salivri prison denied the U.S. politicians permission to meet with the journalist. The U.S. politicians told members of the press that they were dismayed at having been denied permission to meet Karaka, adding that they had visited Turkey to learn why journalists are being detained and arrested in the country. They also met with Berensu and Karaka's lawyers. Lawyer Sokol says foreign journalists, politicians, and human rights advocates they meet say they cannot make sense of how the journalists are still being held in prison.